Hello everyone, it's Leslie Schreiner, and I have a dilemma, and I'm going to go through my thought process with you, help me solve it. So I have this pretty girl here, and her coat is getting pretty shaggy, and I entered her in a show in like two weeks. It's already pretty shaggy, adding two weeks to it. Uh, so it's a little touch and go. So this is a good opportunity to talk about the question I get a lot, which is how long should the hair be? And my answer is for a show dog, what does this silhouette look like? And some people go, what? That doesn't make any sense. But here's what I'm talking about. This coat's very long. Her hairs are, ooh, that's two and a half, three inches long. If I try to strip this all down, there might not be anything under it. And I'm really likely to put holes in. So I don't wanna just look at the hair and say, it's too long without knowing why or what I can do. But looking here in the image of the camera, her silhouette, her outline, if she was backlit and you just saw her outlines, it's, it's not bad. The uh, hair is not interfering with her lines too much. So I'm going to do some things to try to tighten some areas up to help me out. Um, one thing I'm going to look at is this area right here is what grows the very slowest. And actually that looks pretty good. That's had a good amount of time to grow. Right in here, it's okay. It's starting to get a little bushy in a couple of places, obviously around her neck, her shoulders up here, her rear. They're bushier because that hair grows faster. And this hair on the head and the hair on the tail that's really bushy and that's because those areas grow the fastest of all um, the hair in different parts of the body does grow at a different rate so if you strip everything down it doesn't come in at the same time my experience is that from the time that i pluck some hair till the tip of the new hair breaks the skin i call that when it sprouts my experience is that most, most schnauzers, most standard schnauzers for sure, that's six weeks. So six weeks from now, six weeks from pulling that tuft of hair, there will be tiny, tiny little tips of hairs coming out of the skin in that spot. So clearly, if I'm showing in two weeks, Nothing I take out today will have replenished itself by then. So that means I have to be careful not to put a hole in it. I have to be careful of thinking about the future. Another thing to look, look at for me is when do I want to show her again? Well, I was kind of thinking about showing her again, frankly, in about a month, but I won't know until I get farther through this process if that's possible. So the main work I'm going to do here at first is I'm going to do a little light raking through this coat to bring some of the volume down. The raking allows me to uniformly pull some hair all over the dog without possibly putting a hole in by, by focusing too much in one place. I'm going to see how it lays everything down. I might be able to get some undercoat out. And then I'll start picking at some really obvious areas like this bushy tail and this, frankly, not light head. So for raking, I'm going to use this and this undercoat rake. I will say it over and over again. It's a great tool and it needs to be dull. So if you have a new one, or you're just not sure if you've dulled it enough, I literally take a new one of these and go dig in the dirt with it. No joke, dig in the dirt. And then I keep it in the dishwasher for a couple of weeks. 
because the hot water makes the edges dull. It's exactly why we don't put a knife in the dishwasher. Or at least I was always told, don't do that. <laughs> so I'm also not going to brush or comb this coat out first. I'm gonna let it be the way it lays. And I'm gonna start this raking process. Let's see, I have two choices. I could start at the neck and kind of rake into the shoulders, or I could start at the rear. Looks like the front overall needs a lot more work. The rear, I might be able to get away with just pulling some tufts. So I'm gonna feel where that, here's kind of the low point in, in her spine, and there's a kind of a rise right here. So I'm gonna start lightly raking behind that. I'm not trying to be fast. I'm not trying to make speed. I'm really trying to be methodical and pull just a little bit of, a, of hair, get an idea of how much undercoat might be under there. I'm not getting too much right now, but the coat may be a little, the jacket may be a little long for me to get to it. I start with the top line because that's the most important part of the silhouette, the top line. So again, imagine if the dog's back lit. That's what the, that's kind of the picture that first goes in the judge's eye, silhouette. Starting to build up some hair in my, in my rake. So here's a trick. The rake with hair in it is better at pulling hair out of it. So I don't want to take all the hair out because then it'll make it harder to pull. So I'm going to just take out about half so that the rake isn't full and it can take some more hair, but it's got some hair in it to help pull more hair more easily. I'm not going to rake down into the tail because I want to see the bushiness that'll help me to um, pluck that. Okay, so now I've got this section here. Looks a lot nicer to me. It looks flatter. Now I've got a better idea of what on the rear is going to be need, need to be removed because this lower part still pretty lays pretty flat, pretty flush. Now I've got the top line flat and that just leaves some bushiness in the transition area. So, cool, now I know that. Now I'm gonna do the section around where that little bit of a, a, a dip, all dogs have a little bit of a dip right here in their, in their spine. That's normal, that's not a fault. Sometimes the way they're put together can make it bigger or exacerbate it, and that may be part of a fault or part of something that you see in the silhouette or the movement that you don't like, but the, the indentation right there on its own is not a fault. It is normal and natural. All right, so slowly, gently, notice I'm, I'm taking long strokes. That's to help me keep from breaking the coat. Keep getting rid of some excess. If I were to do this fast, Rake, 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 dig in, rake. That's how we break the coat with the rake. Yes, the rake can definitely break the coat, but used properly, it's a very good tool for transitioning into, into um, rolling the coat. Because like I said, it pulls hair very uniformly in all of the areas that I'm, that I'm raking. And that's what I want right now. All right, that's starting to get less resistance. That's how I know that I'm probably getting to diminishing returns in that area. Good girl. All right, now I'm gonna do the neck lightly, but firmly. When I say lightly, it's more about the pressure I'm using. If I just skim across the top and barely 
dig in, I won't get any hair. So I do need to put a little pressure so it gets in there. But again, I'm going slow. Easy, easy. Going slow. If they want to struggle, if they're struggling with you, a lot of the time it means that you're going faster than they're comfortable with or you're pulling harder than they're comfortable with. It could also mean that they're young and fidgety, which is mostly the case with this dog. But you give them the benefit of the doubt. If they're being too fussy, try slowing down. Try pulling less hard. Try treating this as less something that you have to get done. You have to get through to move on to something else. Spend a little more time doing it for its own sake. You'll find that you bond with the dog better. The dog learns to be calmer. Because we're present. If I'm just thinking about getting this job done, I am not present, I'm in the future. And the dog starts to feel like we're treating it as an inanimate object. And who wants that, right? We don't want it. The dog's gonna want it. Now I'm gonna be really careful in this area where the neck transitions into the shoulder. I'm gonna wanna mostly hand pick that later because it's so important, such an important part of the top line. But I am going to go ahead and get a little bit before that. Okay, good. Making good headway. I'm happy, happy with the results. I'm happy that there's, there's getting to be some good hair here. Now I said don't go right across or be careful when you do this part of the top line where the neck transitions into the shoulder and into the back. But one thing you can do is instead of raking right across the top of the back, you can rake on the sides of the shoulders and get most of that area without having to go dig down right into, into it. That's what I'm doing here. All right, gotten the top line pretty well. I'll have to keep revisiting this area over the next two weeks, little by little, because I don't want to put a hole in it. Because that's definitely going to be um, uncompetitive. Now, since this is really bushy right here, I know that I can finger pluck this a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and try to get a little bit closer to the, the top line slope that I want here. I'm being super random. I am looking down and I am looking at some of the longest hairs. I'm grabbing maybe 10 at a time, if even that. And no, no, thank you. I pull and then I kind of look and then I randomly go somewhere else, pull a little, take a look. Don't want to be putting a hole in. That's Rosie getting in the background there, getting ready to have a bark, it sounds like. Okay, I don't want to Go too deep here. You can see I've smoothed this, smoothed this out pretty good. So that's good for now. I'll obviously have to do more work, but I don't want to obsess on that area too much yet. Okay. All right, so I think I've got a pretty good idea that I'm going to be able to you know, pick at this, smooth it down, rake it down in order to be able to to show her in a couple of weeks. I don't know about a month. 
We'll have to see. Because also, like I said, it takes six weeks for the new coat to sprout. So everything that comes out today, everything that I've pulled out of this rake, everything I've plucked with my fingers, none of that hair will have grown back in at all in a month from now either. So when I, that next goal that I have to show, it may or may not be possible. The farther we go in the future, the better chance I have of being able to show her as long as I don't do something crazy with the coat to try to get ready for two weeks from now. Because we gotta think about timing. And what we do now affects us for three months. What we do to the coat now affects the coat for three months at least. Good. Now when I first got her into coat, I made some layers. I'm starting to see the benefit of that now. I'm starting to see that I'm pulling some longer stuff and there's some, there is some shorter hair with color underneath still. So I'm really appreciating that. Now, unless I ultimately decide to pull all of this out, I do want to rake the sides, even though they're a really, they're a pretty good length right now. They're a little long, but I want some hair to be growing in. It takes the longest right here. So I want to make sure I go ahead and rake and get some coat started coming in for a future layer. So if I have to do some problem solving in a couple of months, I'll have done myself a favor and gotten a layer started that, um, you know, should be a good length in, if it sprouts in six weeks, it should be a good length in uh, 10 or so, 10 to 12, 14. Just got a nice hard coat. It stays hard for a long distance on the hair shaft. Um, so, that means it can grow longer without having to have an intervention or i.e. having it all pulled down. Okay, so I'm gonna do, after I get off the video, I'm gonna do the other side the same way. But let's talk about some of the picking now that we gotta do. There's just this little, there's like a little stripe right here. I think you can see it, let me move a little closer. A little stripe right here where the hair is a little puffy. Now I can use either a stripping stone. This is a metal one, but it can be stone. Or I can use a stripping knife if my technique is good and I don't twist my hand or twist the, the knife because that'll break the hair. And I have another one and you can see the teeth are farther apart on this one, a coarse one. That allows me to take a little less hair at a time, which when I'm picking, that might be a good call. So for this little ledge right here of a little bit longer hair, I'm gonna use the, the one that's got a little more space between the teeth so that if I leave some hair, that's good in this circumstance. Every circumstance is a little different. There is no one answer for every situation with every coat. Depends on length, depends on texture, it depends on how long you've been growing it out, it depends on how much time you have until it comes back in. There's a lot of factors. So I'm just picking lightly at the very ends. I'm not Digging in, I don't want to pull big tufts out. That's how I'll put a hole in it. I just want to get the longest, pull a little bit on the longest stuff. No, thank you. Pull a little bit on the longest stuff so I've got a better transition between what I flattened out up here and what's here. No, thank you. No, thank you. Now, if I start feeling like I'm putting some holes in here, I might go back to raking this part again. 
Oh, you're very dancey today. I would rather be playing in the yard right now. So to smooth this out a little bit now, I'm gonna go ahead and lightly rake it. And I'm, I'm holding her skin a little bit on the off side uh, so that the rake doesn't just pull the skin. And also that gives me a little bit of control over her since she's being a little fussy right now. Good girl. Gentle strokes with the rake. All right, now I'm gonna look. And most of that little, that little uh, strip, that little puffy bit is, is gone. I see a couple of little places I can pull just a little more. So now I'm gonna look at the tail and the tail set. The tail is huge, very bushy. I'm gonna have to take a lot of the tail hair. So I'm gonna use my stone for that. And nice thing about a hydraulic table is I can raise it to the height I want. Sometimes if the dog wants to sit a lot, I sit on the table, put my leg underneath them so that when I'm working on the tail, I don't have to hold them up by the tail if they try to sit. I'm just not gonna be able to sit because my leg's in the way. Of course, then I have to go through a little bit of a socialization process to get them to not try to climb over my leg. Good girl, good girl. All right. I've had many of you comment on how patient the dogs are, how well behaved they are. A lot of it is because I just stop and do problem solving when I need to, when they're getting too fussy. And over the years, I've just found a number of ways to um, make to uh, create the circumstance that I want so that I can praise them for, for what I want instead of scolding for what I don't, unless I have to. Now, she is really giving me a run for my, for my money right now. So now I've got her tail in my hand, and since she's being cooperative, but kind of borderline, I'm just taking tiny bits of hair out at a time. Wait, good wait. She gets fussy, I'm gonna slow down. I'm not gonna get fussy with her. That's, that's how they change the subject. They can get us upset, get us frustrated, and guess what, we're not pulling the hair, we're not getting what we want to get done done. And they are actually kind of winning that uh, interaction just lightly plucking with the edge or the corner of the stone and my thumb again so it's not pulling too much at a time not giving her too much of a reason to complain so that i can just recognize that she's being fussy i'm being careful so she doesn't have any particular discomfort she just doesn't really want the restraint and well, life's like that, huh? We all want to be in control. Some of the time. Alright, so, picking at this tail. Again, what I'm doing is basically what I would teach a beginner to do. Which is, um, I'm close to finger plucking, which would be where I just use my, my pincher grip to pull a few hairs at a time or a tuft at a time. The next step up from that is when we use a stone, then we don't have to grip quite as hard. We can be a little more precise sometimes or get a little bit more hair at a time. It's still the same process, which is I'm looking at the tip of the hair. I'm looking at exactly the hairs I'm gonna grab before I grab them. laying that tail into the palm of my hand, letting her dance a little bit, as long as it doesn't interfere too much. So 
very good. Thank you. Good. All right, so now I got a little bit of this fuzziness off this side of the tail. I want to take it all off because in two weeks it won't have grown back in. And if I pull it all out at one time, it'll all grow back in at one time and it will just reproduce this problem in the future. So since I've got two weeks, I don't need to pull it all out now. I can pull some out and even if it's still too shaggy, I can address that some more in a couple of weeks. And I'm going to clear up this area that's uh, the intersection of the rear and the tail. I'm not trying to be perfect today. I'm just huh, really just trying to see if there's any hope. Right now, I'm hoping that I can pull some of this hair out at the base of the tail and at the rear without putting a hole in. So I'm literally pulling five, 10 hairs at a time, only from the very tip of the hair. So I don't put a hole in. I may need to get somebody to help me stabilize her, put their hand under her belly so I can use both hands uh, to do the stripping, to hold the tail where I want it so I can really see what I'm doing. In terms of exactly which hairs here I want to pull out. What I'm trying to do here is, you know, not change the look too much, just have there be less of it. You can see I keep putting the tail back up where I want it to be, where I want it to, uh, where it'll be when she's being shown, either because she'll be holding it up or, or I might be a little bit so the judge can see the right angle. But that's the only way I can see what hairs are going to need to be pulled. The tail's down. I could strip all this hair, but it won't tell me anything about what it'll look like when the tail's back up. And I might have stripped a hole into somewhere or, um, you know, a strip the fault into the dog that's not actually there. Okay, that's better. It's, it's pretty good for now, since like I said, we're just problem solving a little bit, checking the parameters of what we have to work with. It's just a slow and steady process. Now I'm starting to get a little undercoat because the hips here, that's a place where there's a lot of undercoat often, especially right now in the summer. If you listen as you're raking, you can hear if you're starting to pull uh, break coat. There's kind of a, literally a ripping sound. There's a lot of grooming that is not sight oriented. It's hearing, it's sound, uh, well, obviously hearing, sound, touch. Is it touch is a big one. Here, now I got a little bit more. I've almost got rear. Again, I'm, what am I going for? I'm going for the silhouette. So which hair do, which hair needs to be shorter? The hair that's interfering with the silhouette that I want. If you're not sure what the silhouette you're supposed to be working for is, that's when it's good to look back to source book or even start collecting pictures from advertisements in some of the dog magazines of the really well groomed dogs um, and so you can kind of see start to see what you're what you're aiming for if you could take all of those handsome dogs and bitches and like make a composite in your mind of what they all look like or what your ideal of that looks like, then that's what you're grooming to. 
Okay, obviously I'm gonna do a little more work there, but I'm pretty happy with how that is turning out. Now then, this head, this head is a mop. And there's not much of a layer underneath it, which is unfortunate. And what that tells me is I got out of my habit and the habit that I always tell beginners, which is just to work the head every two weeks. Even if it's just for set a timer for five minutes, 10 minutes, just do a little work on the head every two weeks and you'll never have to worry about if there's gonna be hair underneath when you pull it down. Unfortunately, I did not take my advice. So I'm gonna to have to be very careful and I may just have to accept that she may have some holes in her head when I'm done or that it's very, very short. Now, one saving grace, again, I'm using the rake to uniformly pull coat. Um, one saving grace is that the hair on the head grows extra fast. So that six week rule about when the hair sprouts, it's a little sooner than that um, on the head. So even though that won't help me for the shows in two weeks, I might be able to have a nice, a nice headpiece in a month. Maybe there's a little bit of coat coming in. Maybe I raked this less than a month ago the last time. Yeah. Choosing, figuring out what I'm gonna do on the head is gonna be my toughest choice before we show, because there's not much under there. It's really too long, and in this case, I know it's too long because it's changing the shape of the skull, the appearance of the skull. So it's making it look wide, it's making it look domey, it's changing how the planes look. Hair on her head's like, an inch and a quarter. It's really too long. But for now, I don't want to commit to anything I can't work with later. So I am just going to keep raking. Now I'm going to rake from the head into the neck a little bit more. See what that starts to look like. I can lift the hair up and look underneath down at the skin and see if there's a layer. Well, it's a little bit of shorter hair coming in. So if I took this longer coat off, I might not be down to undercoat. I might have a little bit to work with, but it's gonna be a pretty stark transition if I have to take a lot off her, her front, but I didn't have to take a lot off the rear. By this point, some of you are probably wondering, well, if it's this challenging to get this, this dog in coat for two weeks from now, then, then why bother? And that's a very good question. Um, but I'm, I'm going to a show with a friend and I don't know, cause it's not the biggest show. I'm not, I don't know if there's gonna be enough competition for there to be points. So I'm bringing two bitches. I had not planned on bringing this one necessarily because her coat was, uh, I knew her coat was getting long and shaggy, but the other one that I was hoping to bring was not able to come. So that meant this one had to be the second. I don't mind showing multiple dogs to a judge as long as they're nice dogs and they're in good condition so that I'm still giving the, the judge a choice. And I want the judge to look at, if I bring multiple dogs, I want the judge to be able to look at all of them and feel happy that I brought all of them. I, I find that that's respectful. If I have to bring dogs that are wildly out of coat or God forbid, in a clippered coat in order to make points for, for another dog I'm trying to show. And I don't give the judge any choice. 
and by that I mean I bring one dog that's good enough to get points and then the others are all non-competitive for one reason or another. That's what I find um, disrespectful. So I always want to bring, if I'm bringing multiples, I, I do want the judge to be glad to have had the opportunity um, to put their hands on all the dogs I brought and, and not just give them no choice but to be complicit in a, in a scheme to put points on one particular dog. All right. Little more raking, little pulling in the right places. So I can see I've got some bushiness here that I'll probably want to pick by hand before I do this middle part of the top line. This section of the top line right here, this is the most delicate and it's absolutely the last part I will do. I will do everything around it to make it really obvious which hairs are the ones that I'm going to want to pull. Because it may look like it's certain hairs now, but once I tighten up what's around it, that may change and I may find that I've put myself in a bad situation that I can't get out of. I've done that so many times over the years. Okay, so we still got a long way to go, but I feel a lot more confident about being able to put this dog in good condition, something I won't be embarrassed to show the judge. But as you can see, again, going back to that early question, how long should the hair be? The hair should be the length that shows your dog to good advantage. And that's it. That's going to be different for every dog, in every season, in every situation. So there is no absolutes. Don't look for absolutes on that. Just start really getting an eye for what, how you like to see your dog. And what's correct. And what do you see other people who are showing competitively? What do you see them doing? What length do they have in different areas? Maybe you find that it's really long in one place, but it's really short somewhere else. And if you're not sure why somebody has such different lengths in different areas of the, of the body, ask them. You might find some good information out. All right. Do you have any questions about what I've done so far? Go ahead and leave it in the um drop it in the comments and i'll come circle back around and answer some questions and um, i'll probably have her on the table again over the next week or so because i have a lot of meticulous work to do in order for her to be at the show like i want her to be all right thanks everybody thanks kismet good girl